things I've ever done <laughs> from that point of view, because I am faced with an adult class uh, of people and I have no idea where you're all coming from. OK, welcome. Just wait for the. And the scary thing is I have people that I work with on the music team who are far more knowledgeable than I am. Anyway, we shall muddle through. I'd like just to ask you briefly um, what your musical knowledge is like. In other words, do you ever look at a score or do you know little bits? So if you can just think very, very quickly on your feet, um, although we're getting that many people and we might not have enough time to do that. OK, very, very quickly. Sue Grayson. Yeah, I sort of know with the notes are going up and down um, and sort of intervals and things like that. But I'm, I'm not very good at knowing what the note actually is. What? OK, All right. Yeah, okay. but I can sort of, yeah, I can yeah. do bits. Uh, Carol, Gas. Yeah, um, I'm kind of in the same spot. I yeah. Mean, I'm an ear listener. I, I mean, I that's how I learn my music mostly. And I use the music when I can't understand the word that the singer is singing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I do I, I do I'm able to follow it up and down if I get started correctly. That's yeah. It. Okay. Nana Carol. Hi, uh, hi, Claire, everyone. <laughs> hi. Well, I haven't been a music reader at all until now. Um and my music teacher is putting me uh, in some singing exams so I realize I have a big a big catch-up to do oh, wow. so I've put myself on a crash course started about two weeks ago and I'm yeah. really trying to learn um, and the funny thing is it's never clicked with me in my life reading music and um, I think since I've joined the collective and got so much of a passion for singing now it's finally clicking but it's hard work because he's putting me in a Grade seven. So I've not. Oh I've not, my goodness! <laughs> so, but yes, that's the whole. This is yeah. So Incredible. I, that's oh, it. Oh. Okay. So I'm, well, on a, I'm on a real. I think this is probably going to be grade one. So this is great. This is great. Thank you. Yeah, Jeannie. Is it Jeannie or Jenny? Jeannie. Well, I haven't quite clicked yet. Um, I I can go up and I can go down and I can probably tell you how many beats the notes are. But other okay. than that, I have to kind of I have to get a, somebody has to start me off. Yeah. Well, I don't think we're going to be getting quite that far advanced in this, but we'll see. Uh, Ross. Well, I think my score reading is largely self-taught over 30 plus years. And I think I I. I kind of look at it and, and, and enjoy it and concentrate on it. So I know a lot of things about it, but I'm hardly an expert. Okay, so you just like a little refresher course then. Thank you, Ali. Morning. Uh, uh, hello. Um, I'm not a, um, a score reader. I, I hear the song and I know okay. it. But I, if, if we have to follow the score, I will follow it. But knowing where I'm going, because I already know in my head where it should right. go. So okay. I really want to be more um, knowledgeable, really, about what this, the symbols mean and, and what I should, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to read the symbols. But yeah. I would only use the score in choral music where everybody has their score. Yeah. But barbershop, as soon as, you know, we've had the beginning, it, I never look unless we're told to look there. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Good morning. Good morning. Pretty much the same as a lot of others have said, um, I do learn by ear. Um, I can look at a piece, I'll know where the notes are on the piano, but getting the notes in my head, not easy. So a lot of times my, mem my memorization comes from listening to others and memorizing what the notes are. But in terms of reading a score, okay, never have. Thank you. Inika. Hi, I can read the score, but not sing uh, from the sheet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm not sure I'm about to do, teach you that today, but I hope you get something out of it. Lesana? Uh, the same as Inika. And I like to the, hear the English terms because okay. I only don't know the Dutch ones. Yeah, that's, that's a very, very good point, actually, because we've got Americans, the Europeans, and we all use different terminology as well. So that's that's a challenge in itself, yeah. Rosemary? 
Yes, I learn by by hearing it. I mean, I know it goes up and down. I know how long the notes have got to be, but that's it. That's it. Right. OK, fantastic. Chrissy, morning. Or reader, and I also sight read, so I'm here for fun. OK, <laughs> I'll, I'll call on you then when I need some help. <laughs> and last but not least, Kerry. Good morning, Kerry. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm, uh, I do everything by ear. I'm not a school reader. However, um, when I first joined Collective, I chose to get some books that um, Debbie said that was a good idea to get. And I went and did my level one. Um, so I passed that. So if you give me a score and give me sort of 20 minutes that I can tell you what all the notes are. And then when Simon does all his guide tracks, I put a picture in my head to where they are. And so it's like a story to me. So I follow like a story in my head. But Without Debbie's input with those books, thanks, Debbie, um, I wouldn't have got grade one. So thank you very much. Well done. Yeah. OK, right. Well, we're all coming at this in different directions, so you just have to bear with me. Some of it will maybe be more useful than others, but I'm, I'm just going to go back to some very basic basics today. Um, and then we'll, we'll and I'm going to ask you questions. So you need to stay awake. There will be things for you to test you, whether you've listened or not. <laughs> um, I, th I think uh, you can either write, if you have any questions, you can either write them in the chat. We've got people that will monitor the chat or if you want to put your hand up. But I am going to use, um, I'm going to share my screen. There'll be something on the screen. So your pictures for everybody are going to get smaller. So it might be possible, uh, better to put a question in the chat if you have and we'll stop. Um, or if I stop and say, are there any questions, which I might do at some point. OK, I'm just going to need to close this chat thing down. Otherwise, my screen is going to get very small. And as all good Zoomers do. I'm going to talk myself through this. So I'm going to share my screen and uh, and hopefully, can you see a slide that says how to read a score part one? Smashing. That's a good start then. <laughs> okay, great. Okay. Um, I don't know whether you saw my Facebook page, but I um, my friend is learning Czech at the moment and she's really, really struggling. The reason she's doing that is her daughter's married a Czech man. So I put into Google Translate the session information in Czech because I don't recognize the Czech language at all. The, lang the, the vowel sounds are all, um, well, they're more or less missing. It's loads and loads of consonants and lots of little different accents and everything. It's a very weird language. And I thought for some of you, a, a musical score is gonna look a bit like a foreign language. It's not necessarily gonna mean anything. So I'm hoping, and I call them squiggles, that you'll have a better understanding of some of the squiggles. <laughs> Um, we're going to start off with looking at dynamics because that's very basic, looking at how um, quietly or um, loudly we should we, we might be asked to sing and how we know what we're supposed to be doing. Simon doesn't tend to use that many dynamic markings on his scores um, because we listen, tend to listen to him and listen to the instructions. But mostly in, in a, a music score, you would find some direction from the composer how loudly or softly or whatever, or whether you're getting louder or softer. Um, how we recognise how fast or slowly to sing a song, because the tempo is obviously we can sing. I remember I can never forget my husband. I'll never forget my husband saying after we did the lame is, um, can you hear the people sing? He said, well, you slowed that down a bit. It was a real dirge. I hated him for it. But obviously we sang that actually quite um, sedately compared to the, the original. So we obviously changed Well, Simon changed the tempo of that. Um, and then. Some of you are already at this point is this is where we're looking at how high or how low a note is and how we know how high or how low a note is and what the cleft signs mean. Now, this is I don't know how far we'll get. It depends on questions. I have timed it and it would fit in. That would fit in. But it depends on how many questions we get. If we get any further, we'll start looking at how long notes are, uh, what a time signature is and the rest. What would take it from there? OK, right. So what do we need to know when we're reading a score? Well, obviously, we need to know how to sing or play something. So we need to know how loudly, softly, dynamics, how quickly and how we interpret it. So there's just some um, little words there that we will come across during the next uh, few minutes or so. And we need to know what to play. So we need to know the notes that we're going to play, what key we're in, what pitch we're in, what rhythm to play. Now, all of that as uh, Carol has hinted, even with um, her music exams, we have grades in the UK that go from one to eight. So a lot of the stuff that we're gonna do today might go into grade one, which is right at the very beginning, but the rhythm and the, the keys and everything will be appearing 
much further down the line. So we're obviously not going to get into grade seven, even though Carol's being <laughs> shoved into the singing at a very high level. So some of these may be familiar to you. Um, what you're likely to see in terms of how loudly or softly we're likely to sing are some little letters written underneath uh, the, 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 the lines of the music. And these are all from the Italian. Um, I'm sure there is a very long history lesson as to why we use Italian, but we're not going to go there today. So if you see the letters PP, that means it's very quiet and it stands for pianissimo. And P is piano. And that's just quiet. Obviously, we can argue, well, what is very quiet? What is quiet? And that's obviously where the, the um, musical director or your conductor would obviously explain how very quiet we are being or but in principle with it in relation to each other they are the term that's the terminology we use so mp is mezzo piano so that's quite quiet there we are that's a challenge for particularly the non-english speaking of you, of you. Uh, mezzo forte quite loud forte is loud and fortissimo is very loud um so if you were to look at that little scale that's obviously meant to be played loudly or sung loudly, or F for forte, and P for piano. So that's quietly. OK, so you might want to change your volume. You don't want to sing quietly all the way through. It could be a very sudden change. So you might have an F marking on the paper, and then a little bit later, it might just say P. But sometimes you're asked to do it gradually. Um, so you hear, see these hairpins. Uh, they were described as hairpins to me when I was learning. Um, and they, they always confuse me with maths because the maths ones went the other way around. But this is the, I think this one's logical. So the hairpin that goes up means you're getting louder. So you're doing a crescendo. And you might see the word crescendo or cresc written. And this obviously gets quieter because the hairpin is going the other way. So if they go up, it's louder. And if they go down, you're gradually getting quieter. And again, that could be over a much longer space than four notes. It could be over a whole phrase that you're getting like gradually louder and then you get gradually softer. Or it might be that you get gradually louder and you stay very loud for a long period of time. Obviously, every piece of music is going to be completely different, but it's just recognizing these um, hairpins for what they are. So I'm going to ask you to do a little bit of work now. Hope if you've been with us for a while, or even if you haven't, you might recognize this. This is the start of It's Not the End. OK, so if you just give you a few minutes, just have a look at what you've got in front of you. We have some letters. Um, not very many. We've got uh, we've got some hairpins as well, but not very many. So would somebody like to be very brave and tell me how they would sing bar one and bar two. Somebody speak to me. Shall I pick on somebody? <laughs> Sarah, thank you. <laughs> All right, I'll be brave. Um, just to start quiet. And yeah. in both bars, we start quiet, we crescendo. And then the term I know is decrease. De Day crescendo. I don't yeah, know if that's yeah. used anymore. Yeah. So, but crescendo, day crescendo. It's like um, a little bit of a wave, like um, yeah. really pulling the listener in. So, Mushroom. starting quiet, but have those moments of you know loud and soft. Yeah. So we're gradually growing, and then we're gradually getting. I mean, it's obviously a very very short period of time, but and obviously. Um, so would somebody like to tell me what you do in the third, fourth and fifth bar? It's not a trick question. It's just reinforcement. Oh, well, you know what? Thank you, Carol. Well, you again, you um, you you're quiet, you started quiet and um, go louder. And then as you go into the next two bars you hold that for a bit longer and you hold you gradually go quieter but holding it for quite a length of time a yeah longer so time you've, you've obviously got longer you're gradually increasing but you've got slightly slower 
yes inquire to that so I have a question there Claire would, oh, no, that please. Mean, would, would that mean then I know it's quite subjective or maybe it's not once you've got the um tempo I don't I don't know the answer to that but um does that mean that um you you have to learn to to regulate uh, just how quiet and how gradually you're I think doing that this is where the, this the 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 fusion of the the musical director and the singer isn't it because on the on the if you had no guidance whatsoever if you were just given that you would have to use your own common sense you would have to decide how soft soft is yeah you have to decide how much you're going to grow yeah but obviously with with a musical director you will have somebody in front of you usually explaining with their hands or in verbally how quiet you're going to be how loud you're going to get and how soft you're going to get yeah um just looking at it clinically on the page I would say it's very difficult to know exactly how to do that and because we use guide tracks we've obviously will listen to Simon doing that and we will have the music team telling you what to do in rehearsal so it's obviously a very different way of approaching it yeah. and does anybody else on the music team want to chip in at that point I can't see any, I can only see half a dozen people at the moment. Why is that opened already? Shouldn't have gone back soon. Simon always says kind of never to get to a 10, doesn't he, in terms of volume. Yes. So I yes, kind of base that yeah. on then graduations of sort of, of that think, thinking of a scale of sort of one to 10. And I'd put the pianissimo down probably towards a two or a one. And yeah, that's, that, maybe yeah. up to like a nine and then everything else slots in somewhere in the middle. Yeah, that's helpful. I, I've forgotten that he does that. Yes, it's it's really never getting to your full loudness if possible, because there's always needs to be something to come. Yeah. Um, OK, so this is a very easy question, but let's some, see how somebody brave. We've moved on for the first bit and then we start singing the first bit of words in uh, the tenant bring us in. Um, so what sort of level are we going to do that compared to what we did before, do you think? Come on, somebody be brave. Chrissy, thank you. <laughs> Quite quiet like me. <laughs> oh, bless you. How is it, how is it in relation to the first bit that we've sung? Um a little bit louder but yeah perfect absolutely perfect so a little bit louder than we went before but we still probably may be on, on if we use julia's um explanation from simon we're probably maybe on a three or a four out of ten at that point okay so that's your first little bit of learning you've got some um dynamic markings so hopefully and again this is this is going to be recorded so you can look back at it because i don't expect you to remember absolutely everything by the time you've left here, let, let alone in, in you know a few days' time or a few weeks' time. Okay, so we, we've given some guidance about how loudly or softly to sing. We also need to know how fast to sing it. Uh, now, obviously, when we have guide tracks, we sing along with Simon, don't we? So we know how fast or slow to sing it. But again, if we're looking at it in isolation, you may see words. Again, these are Italian. Um, so if you see adagio, it means it's pretty slow, and Dante is a walking pace now that will depend of course they're also very subjective aren't they how fast anyone walks moderato quite quickly allegro is fast and presto is very very fast um however you will also see um this this sort of little bit down here so this is a little bit back to front here because we haven't looked at note values but what that actually means is that you've got 120 of these beats per minute so that is actually quite fast um do you all know what a metronome is <laughs> we've all seen a metronome where it goes click 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 so you can set that to actually click the speed so if we look at some of simon's masterpieces um at the front here that um fred actually did this one i'll take that back put sorry fred this is fred's um score he's put in that this this beat here crotchets for us brits I'm, I'm not very good with the european and american i'll come back to that in a minute um so we've got 64 of those um to a minute so that's more or less a second isn't it you could you could sort of work that out 
So, and we were helped out to say that was a slow march. If we look at what can I say, we've got 120 of these, and we've got a little bit of help there that says, I've, I've got, I'm going to see a theme here. Um, I'm thinking Fred might be the one that put them in rather than, um, and then we've got Dover, and we've got a help there, we've got Andante, and we've got 78. So your next, oops, we don't want to, go, let's undo that. Um, don't want that in there. Will somebody like to tell me which is the fastest of those three songs then in speed? Thanks, Carol. What can I say? Yeah, absolutely spot on. It's not too difficult to work that is out the quickest and, and the slowest would be somebody else. Yeah. Kerry? The one that's on the right hand side of the screen. I'm not sure what, the, what that one is. Uh, it's the one that's got the and. Oh, sorry, it. it's, it's Dover. Yeah, so the Dover one I think is the slowest. Um, no, it's not. Hang it's on, not, sorry. No. Really you hear the people sing. Yeah. Sorry. I said, yeah, I said yes sorry. to your, yes, it's Dover. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, do you hear the people sing? Is yeah. It's not much in it, actually. No. One's got 64 no. and one's got 78. So when you see these notations at the beginning, that should hopefully give you now a clue that it's trying to de denote um, the speed of something. And if you think about um, 60, beats to a second would be six, yeah, 60 beats to a minute would be a second. It can give you a rough idea how fast or how slow they are. So obviously this one's like a beat is a, is a half a second long. Does that make sense? Okay. Do you know what? If I was, if I'd been at school teaching and I had a class like you, I'd have been in heaven. <laughs> You're all so well behaved. <laughs> yeah, that's what you have for adults, isn't it? I thought while we were here, I would point out because this is all to do with timing as well. This funny sign here, um, it has a name, it's called a fermata, but I must admit, I grew up just calling it a pause sign. But that basically means that the note that is on the top of, you slow it down. Um, and again, that is very, if you think about sight, if you look back over Simon's, you can do this yourself. You can look back over your scores and the guide tracks. And obviously the speed he would slow something down at might be different to, um, the one you know that somebody else might so that it might be a very long pause somebody else might conduct it and it might not be so long but again that is just something for information while it was in front of us um so this little thing here is called a fermata okay right so then we get on to this is what people say some of you feel a little bit more comfortable with this about how high or low notes are actually going and what direction they're going so this is beginning to look at how you read music now I wouldn't be trying to teach anybody to read music in less than an hour um but I'm, I'm just going to try and give you those of you that are coming at this from a completely blank um they say blank score sheet don't they but they don't mean that um so we're looking at how high or low, lower note sounds and obviously depending on whether you're what voice part you are you're going to sing higher or lower um, so what we've got in front of us now, I need to ask the question. I think, am I right? I've got this image off the internet, but can somebody from over the pond, do you call this a staff? Just don't unmute yourselves and say yes or no to me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Fine. Okay. So we in the, the UK, what about Europeans? We call it a stave in the UK. What about the Europeans? Does that, anybody got any hints there? Susanna? Mind you, I'm asking you to translate from a foreign language as well, aren't I? Because you're going to say what it is in German. <laughs> um, Lissan or any? Anyway, I'm going to call it a stave, whatever you call it. If, it, if you're more familiar with it as staff. So a stave is basically the five lines of the um, music. Um, we'll look at clefs. Oops, why is this so sensitive? I just moved my mouse and it went, sorry, sorry about that. Right, okay, I'll keep my hand off the mouse. I'm, try I'm trying to do some indications as well. Um, so obviously the higher up the note's written, the higher the note will actually sound. Um, so the example given here is obviously this one is, is higher up the stave than that one. So that one is going to sound higher than that one. 
And if you look at that one in relation to that one, that one's even higher, and that one is even lower than that one. So that gives you, hopefully gives you, most of you probably can work that one out, but obviously the higher it's written up, um, the higher the sound it's going to make. Now, the I don't, again, I don't expect you to remember these, but every line has, when it has a note written on it, has a letter attached to it. And we actually, um, we only go up to G. And again, I'm not going to go into discussion why we don't go H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, and so on. So the lines, uh, most, most of us, when we learn to read music, uh, use a memnomic to help us remember that. So every good, every good boy deserves, I, I was taught fish for some reason, but has anybody else got any others that they've learned, music team in particular, or Sarah? There's two I learned. Um, every good boy deserves fudge. And another one is empty garbage before dad flips. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> um, every, I like green, every green bus drives fast is another one. Okay. Ooh, right. I like that one. <laughs> yeah, Mike. You, what, what? Um, I always deserved favours. Yeah. That's what I was taught as well, Mike. You know, yeah. <clears throat> oh right okay because yeah. you're a good boy mike obviously every good boy deserves favors yes yeah but you do whatever helps you remember it but that is that's a good way to try and remember what the lines are called by um giving yourself a little memnonic to go with it and the spaces they actually spell a word so you can make another one up but they f a c e spells face so that's quite an easy one um so that's the note names. Again, you can see they're easy to learn, but it's whether they mean anything and whether you can apply them, obviously, is, is quite a, a detailed theory course. Um, but I'm going to do something very simple now. I'm not going to ask you to read me the, the, <laughs> what the notes are, but would you like to have a look, just spend a little bit of time looking at that um, um, line? And can you tell, would somebody like to tell me what they think is the highest, not the, which note it is, but which words have the highest pitch in that little, is it three bars? Yeah, three bar section. And just bear in, you can either calming, just- Calming, calming. No, um, sorry, more, mooring. Mooring, yes, mooring. Yeah. That's right, because that's <laughs> right the, at the very top. <laughs> yeah, sorry, you're right, reading. Yeah. Um, here's this notation, didn't he? he did a, uh, absolutely. <laughs> is this, unless, in case you hadn't recognised it, it's from our last song, For Good. Mm. Uh, but yes, calming is right at the top of the stave there on that top space. Um, so would somebody like to tell me which word has the, the lowest pitch there? B. Yep, yep, down here there's the C. So that one's on the, the penultimate line from the bottom. So that's the lowest one. So if you start looking at the shape of it, this, mm. this note is all the same. And then you're going up one. And again, these are all the same. And then you can obviously, what people tend to, well, I mean, the way I learned music was you just count the intervals and gradually you, you become accustomed to knowing what the interval sounded like. Mm. So you count each line and each space, so you're going down one, two, three, there, down to there. That's the same, that goes down three, that goes up one, and so on. So you, you see, you get the shape of the way that the music works. Mm -hmm. um, and some people are incredibly blessed, and they can just look at that, and they can sing it. <laughs> I would say that I do a combination of both. I listen, and I look, and the two sort of match up with one another. But it's, it's a, I mean, I think it's a, a, absolutely, and people, I know, I'm pretty sure Julia is pretty able to do this at the piano, just sit down, you look at your music and you play it. Obviously you need to practice, but you can, you can have a rough go at it. So everybody comes at this from different levels. Um, but so it's, it's really just a matter of looking, listening, looking at the score and working out the intervals and gradually the intervals become um, more and more familiar with you. Okay. Now, as well as, those five lines we have what we call clefts and these are the squiggly things that you'll see at the beginning right at the beginning of a piece of music so there, there are more but I'm not going to introduce those to you because we won't use them in the choir um, we have the treble clef which is like that and um, 
when you're learning to to write music it's quite you have to learn actually how to draw that so it's like like that so you might want to practice you actually start with the circle bit and you go round you go up and you come down and you do a loop like that um and obviously if you are a female um lady singer you are more likely to come across treble clefs written and then we've got the bass clef which sort of suggests in itself that that's for the lower voices um and i think that's part of our collective logo isn't it the bass signs they've got the two bass bases back to front um so that's just like a, that's much easier to write and those two lines when we look at the score in a minute have to go in a particular place on the score if you were you were writing it yourself okay so treble clef is usually used for higher voices so piranhas lady altos often we call these tenor and lead don't we in collective so these notes are higher and then the bass clef if you're a lady bass or you're male um baritone tenor bass these notes are always going to be lower okay i've got no idea of time on my screen so oh god yeah fine um so if you look at what we've got in front of us now um the treble clef that's the treble clef there so i mean it, it, that's not critical but the the actual little beginning of it usually sits just below that second line up there and it twiddles around like that just goes above and then comes underneath. And as I said, the bass clef, those two dots sit across that line there. Um, I'm going to ignore that for the moment. We'll come back to that later because that's that will just confu maybe confuse you at the moment. So this line is written in the treble clef, and this one's written in the bass one. So each, I'm not going to, again, each of these lines in the bass clef and spaces will have different names to the ones that I showed you earlier on. Um, but we're going to just stick, we're not going to go that much further today. So if you have a look at this line <clears throat> and this line, um, these notes are all going to be sung much, much lower than these ones. Okay. And on a score, you'll find that these ones are always at the top and these ones are at the bottom. Simon's oft often got four part or even six part we're coming up to aren't we so you might you'll have probably two maybe written in the treble clef and two in the bass clef as well um whoops i've got the pitch sorry i've got pictures in the way and i can't see i can't see what i've got on my screen let me just move you okay um now just looking at the shapes of those lines would anybody like to look at which word might have the very highest pitch in the whole of that piece that we've got there in front of us. So as a clue, we're looking at the top line because obviously that's going to be higher anyway. Rita? Was it the word one? Is it clear there? Yes, <laughs> they're both exactly the same, aren't they? Clear and uh, there. And which one, which word do you think has got the lowest out of that? Again, clue is it's going to be on the bottom line. Giveness. Yes, whoever said that, well done. Was that you, yeah. Rosemary? Me. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, giveness, because that's down, that's down here. Okay. Oh, it's just beginning to rain outside. Uh, Claire, right. can I just interrupt you for a minute? Yes, you can. Uh, Rita has got a question. Over Lovely. To you, Rita. No, I put my hand down. Sorry, Mike. It's this auto thing where you put your hand up and it gives you a hand raise. Right. Oh, that yes, we, we we discovered that, didn't we? That if you go like that, <laughs> it recognises you. Yeah. So you ask your question by answering the question. If that makes sense. I'm hoping that everyone can imagine a piano keyboard. You've all seen pianos, haven't you? Um, and if you look at what we've got in front of you this is our treble stave and this is our um bass stave and basically each of these notes here represents a white note on the piano keyboard doesn't matter about the black ones at the moment so that's going up from middle this is what we call middle c all the way up there now if you think about a piano it's much much bigger than that does anybody actually know how many keys there are on a piano? Somebody put me to shame because I should have checked that, shouldn't 80 I? Eighty something. 
80 something yeah well we haven't got 80 there have we 88, it's 88. thank you Debbie <laughs> 88 so we've run out of spaces haven't we our lives what do we do what do we do we can't we've got to go higher what happens if you need to sing or play above that or sing or play below that so then we sorry sorry I didn't catch that do you make it a shot uh no no what you do is actually make the stain bigger by adding some more lines in um so for example here we've got one two three lines above but we've also created one two three four spaces as well and we can do the same going down so we put another line there another line there another line there so we've created three more lines but we've also created one two three more spaces as well so the lines that fall below the middle C on the piano, which is the middle note in the piano, are donated on a score by adding these extra lines in. Now, these have always been the bane of my life. Um, as a, an alto singer, I don't need to worry about them too much because I don't get up very high, but I do sometimes have to go below, down. And I, I still, after years and years of music reading, have to think, count them down. So it's, it's quite... It's, personally I find them a challenge I suspect if you play the flute or the piccolo and you're always up here um you're going to get more used to these extra lines and spaces so you would just but, keep but then the ones down below you have to think about because the top ones are fine but the bottom ones aren't yeah so <laughs> depending on what your experience is you tend to not take as much notice of these but you can keep going you can keep going and going I, again I'm sure somebody will be able to show me a piece of music that's got the highest note possible in it but um, and the lowest note possible oh this is so so sensitive um so and you would just begin continue to name them so um if you're interested that top note was a g so the next one what well, would be an a and then it would be a c and so on so you just keep going up the alphabet but only ever get to g and then you come back again um you never get you never go to h um so if you have a look at this another same little bit from or well, another bit from for good you can see here that simon's created this so we needed an extra line there we need an extra one there and one there and one there so would anybody like to tell me looking at that which is our highest note there now a little bit more challenging which words? I don't expect to know the word, the notes. Which words? Highest is. Would it be the word the? Yes, there's another one though. Clear the. Yeah, there's actually three, isn't there? This note, that and the note, other, and that yeah. note are all the same. So we've got clear the, and the there uh. as well. Might as well test you. Which one's the lowest there? Well, we're doing uh. a higher and lower. Giveness. Yes, givenness, smashing. Yeah, we get in there, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. Oh. So I reckon even if you can't read music, you know, you can't look at that note and say, well, that's a C and this is what a C sounds like. You can you can get a feel of where the music's going. Um, and you can certainly recognise where the note is exactly the same. So, for example, here, or even though we've got a break here and we'll come to rest later that's a little rest there the next note that you start singing on is exactly the same as that one and then you're just going up one then you're going up three and then you're going up another one that's the same then you're coming down now we, we then hit a little bit of we've got we've now got some funny squiggles we've got that sign and we've got that sign now the, the easiest thing i can say to you here is that these are to do with this thing here which is the key signature and that is for another session um but these are sharps so that's mm -hmm. a sharp there and this takes the sharp off it and basically if you manage back to that keyboard the sharps are the black notes so they are the very small gaps between the whole notes and they're often they are known as semitones um but again that's that's probably more like grade seven or grade six rather than grade one which is what we're doing today but you can still see that 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 note um and that note and that note are the same and then we're going up here we're going along we're going down and then we're going up so really you can get an idea and some of you saying this is what you do anyway where the music is actually going to 
even if you don't know that that is a, an F sharp or that's a C sharp or that what the names of the notes are. The names of the notes are important if you want to know them, but you can get a feel of how the music moves. Right, I am going to begin to wind things up now. We're gonna have a little, um, I'm gonna say test is not a test. <laughs> But just look at the things that we've covered. Then we'll give you a chance to ask any questions and go back and over anything. Um, so the first word I'm going to ask you to try to explain to me is the word clef. Right. Would anybody like to be bold enough? And anything at all that you know about a clef, where you can sit on there, what's it called? Anything at all, any fact at all about a clef, what it is, what does it do? Um, the G clef is for higher notes. So I, I, I hate this because I can't see. I've got, I can't see. Um, that. Sue here. Sue. That's that? Julie speaking. Sorry, who is speaking? First of all, it was Jeannie, and now Sue's going to say. Sorry, something. Jeannie. <laughs> so you called this one the G clef, did you? Yeah. Right, okay, so this is where we've got terminology because we call that treble clef, but yes. And what did you say? Sorry, I think it sounds going in and out. Jean mm. is on mute now, so Sue All right, okay. can speak, I think. Okay, so um, the the treble we, we call treble clef covers the sort of higher stave, and the bass clef covers the lower stave. Brilliant, excellent. That's that's in a nutshell. That's a really good answer. So this one is the treble one to remind you. I'll, I'll, your homework is to go away, practice drawing treble clefs everywhere you go. <laughs> you graffiti treble clefs all over where you live. <laughs> um, okay. Can I just can I just say, Claire, that that yes, Jeannie calls it the G clef. Yeah, which is correct, and that because is it, why it has to begin on that, on that G. to learn to draw it. Yeah. It's a yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't hear. I only heard like a fraction of what what Jeannie, what you said, Jeannie. But you're 100 percent right. It is called the G clef because it sits on the um, G line. G line. Um, can I ask? Do you, do you have a name for this one, Jeannie? Then this base clef. You call that the base clef as well, yeah. Lisanna. F. F. Yeah, clef. I was going to say it can that can be known as the F because that line that line's an F one as well. And this is where we. It's all to do with what you call things and what I'm talking about might think, oh, I don't know what that is. But in fact, actual fact, you've just got a different name for it. So, yeah. Mm. So G clef or treble clef or F clef or bass clef. I'm sorry if this is coming from a little bit from a, um, a an English British perspective. Right. Anybody like to have a stab at what we understand by pitch? Simply. Oh, sorry, I've got to stop moving my mouse. Uh, I, bet, I bet you can. Yeah. It's, yeah. Claire, yes. it's difficult when you can't see everybody on the screen. I know I it is. Isn't I don't it? want to put in if, if somebody else wants to speak. Carol does. <laughs> it's because I'm learning something. Um, yeah, so um, pitch. Um, is simply my understanding of it is how um, how high or how low or yeah. a, a level a note is, and um, going back to the clef that will help, and and this and the stave will help show um, where in fact that note will be pitched at and how it should yeah. be recognised. Smashing! That's that's re really really good answer. Well done. Um, yeah, so obviously all of these notes will sound much higher than the ones down there, um, very, very simply. Um, you will hear the word pitch being used in terms of which note is our starting note, our key note. If at the beginning of every piece of music that we've recorded, Simon will blow the note that is the key note. And we often have to work out where we start from that, but that we need to understand to understand it in that relation to that is what this means. And that is, you know, moving on to something a little bit more complex. 
Right, that's so nice. I should probably have had that one first. Um, if somebody didn't know what a stave or a staff was, what would you, how would you describe it to them? Is it the lines on the sheet of paper which yep. allow you to put the? Yeah, so it's basically the five, the five lines that the notes sit either sit on or above, in the, either in the spaces or the gaps. Yeah, perfect. And the ledger lines. Anybody like to have a go at that one? Just shout out. I can't. We, uh, the, the extra lines that uh, are, are above or below to yeah. increase the keyboard. Uh, absolutely. Uh, yes. Yeah, mm. So the, the ones above. So these ones, obviously, here in the baseline, are, are we increasing the the the, the, rep, the breadth of the the stave there? That's absolutely fantastic. Right. I'm going to stop sharing uh -huh. my screen at that point. Claire, I just I just did a quick Google because I didn't know why there are five lines in a stave. And apparently it used to be written as 11 with middle C on the middle. And then as music and instruments developed, they split, they split it up it. and had the extra line mm. in between yeah. for the middle C. I didn't know that. I'm sure there's loads of fascinating facts yeah. about how we got to where we actually... I just wondered why there's five, yeah. and not seven, yeah. not eight. Yeah. Four, you know. I know. Well, I suppose the more you've got, the more... It must have been mind blowing to have a stave that was like ten lines yeah. or, or whatever. It would have been incredible. So, uh... Yeah, that's right. called the great stave. The whole one is the great stave, and right. then we've just split them. Okay, right. Has anybody got any questions or requests for another session, Kerry? I just wondered um, when you just had that very last piece up. Um, is the F sharp? different to a C-sharp in how it's shown. You know, um, I'm not sure what you call it. Um, do, you want, do you want me to put the... So look, yeah, can you put it back so I yeah. can <laughs> explain? Yeah. Um, sure. Do you mean this, this one here? So when, uh, uh, where you go to the word I, is it, uh, um, and it's got, um, a sharp sign next to it, hasn't it? That one, that's it. Right. And then okay. you go further along to the word four. Yeah. But it's got the dot next to it. What is the difference, please? Are they both sharps? Uh, right. Okay. Let, let's step back to track. This, these are sharps. Yeah. Okay. So every time you play, if you look along the line, that's that's the, the D that, that's there. That every time you play that note, it would be a sharp. Oh, sharp. Mm -hmm. I apologize if this is getting beyond some people's knowledge that they don't know that that is again that is the same they're all the same note and that mm -hmm. is naturalizing it so it's not a sharp it's just a d oh, okay. okay so those yep. two there are d naturals so yep. on the keyboard it would be a black uh, it would be the note ab above the d which would be a black note then it goes to the white note and then it goes back to the black note so, so when i said sharps earlier i think what i was what I thought I was going to see on here was the piano, and I meant the blacks on the piano. Yeah, so that, 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 yes, if you had the piano keyboard in front of you, you would be able to see um, if we, we donate, you know, denoted it like, like that, the notation there, you would be able to see how they work. But this is really, I mean, that's a, it's a horrible key to play in anyway. Singing is not so bad, but to play, and you've got to think about every, you've got one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, you've got six sharps there. So that's that's a challenging key. It's perhaps not a good one to use as an example for it. So. Um, Carol, you had you got your hand up. I do. So so then the sharp on give, does that mean it returns to the key? It returns. Key? So that note there is exactly the same as I. So it's a very subtle, it's a semitone. It's a very little gap down and then a very little gap up. Okay. Susanna. Thank you. We are getting into deep stuff now. <laughs> yeah, just to make it a little bit more complicated. Actually, the naturalization is just for the rest of that measure or bar. So that's why the sharp for uh, back in. give is in, um, what do you call Bracket. those? Brackets. Brackets. Yeah. Just as a reminder that Binder. it goes back to the, to the sharp. Yeah. You don't need, the composer didn't need to put that in there, but it's just there as a, as a help. Just in case you think, oh, I've, I've not gone back to a sharp yet. Good point. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Any more questions? I'll take this off share at the moment. Susan. I'm sorry, I was late. Um, okay. 
I'm so glad I joined. But I had a, sort of like they call it a mic drop or aha moment just now in your session because of something that you said that was very simple, but I had never heard it before in the way that you expressed it. And that was to count the lines and the spaces to know what the interval is and to learn that way. Because as a non-music reading barbershop singer, we do lots of exercises that might go one, two, three, four, five. I never counted the spaces so that one, five, one, two, one, three, one, four, you know, whatever. The, and counting those, it, it, it was like, why didn't I ever hear that before? So when I look at music now, not only am I going to be saying EGBDF, because I sing treble on the treble, F-A-C-E, if I sent one that I don't know, I'm now I'm going to be counting numbers to and try to remember the interval so there's a reason for interval training duh Carol, thank you i don't like the look of your hands on your head You're okay i haven't <laughs> blown your mic away so thank you for you know giving me another yeah, tool good. to find where the note is yeah carol gas are you okay yeah i'm just thinking that um i uh, that was way above i mean i haven't even gotten there yet i just i just yeah i have to let that go susan thank you okay right not, i'm not, sorry not everything that i've done but just that little bit no no <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, right any any more questions comments or how many of you think you might come back tomorrow <laughs> It's, it's been okay. fantastic Claire really. oh good really excellent okay well I mean I've, there may be people that haven't been here um today that will arrive tomorrow but I would I'll I'll just on well, Marissa's a bit an hour late Paul oh dear um unless she's come for the next one the coffee and chat's not till next but I'll I will just keep going then if that's okay um but if in the meantime if there's anything you want to um you know bring back from today, tomorrow, um, then feel free. We can go back over things. Okay. Marissa, are you here? If you are here just to start the session, we're just about to finish. Oh, no, I know you were finishing. I just. Oh, that's okay. The end of the end. Thank you. Yeah, okay. We're literally just winding up. So I, I, there is another session tomorrow if you want to, to join us. You're very welcome to stay for the goodbyes. Uh, we, have we got any photos done, or do we need to do that? It's just about to say, should we yes. do a nice smiley photo? Okay. Well, well, in Carol's case, <laughs> yes, whatever you feel yeah. at the end of the session, if you feel... Uh, that was only the last bit, Carol. <laughs> that was only the last bit. Okay, so yeah, yeah. let's have a congratulations. Pat, I'll tell you what, let's pat ourselves on the back because I think we've all understood all that. Well, my brain is so right. Big smile, three, two, one. <laughs> Okay, I've got it. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Brilliant. Okay. I well, think that'd be very right, clear. Right. You, thank thank you. you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Any questions, come back with them tomorrow. <clears throat> or if you want me to go over anything tomorrow, I can, I can do that. And Kerry, I'm really pleased you asked that question because it just it shows that you're really looking very carefully at things. And um, so, yeah, we'll do in a little bit more detail tomorrow. Okay. Right. Have a good rest of collect i presume i'm i hope i'll see most of you at four o'clock if not before um for our new song yeah it's exciting yeah but i haven't got a score because what i was going to do tomorrow <laughs> was take the score and apply what we've done today and no score so we can't do that never mind we'll let we'll use ones that we've already got Okay, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.